Well, welcome everyone. We are down to the last major component for the cabin build. I have to cut one more floor joist out this morning. And this is a white oak log that we milled with the chainsaw mill a whole lot of videos ago. So some of you actually got to see that. Um, we're going to take the edges off of this and turn it into a 2x8. And then as we go, I'm going to talk a little bit about the process of getting all of this material milled and what we went through with the saw as far as hours and things like that. And also show you how well these rafters turned out. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's get this board cut first. We're going to start there and that'll finish up the mill. I think I've got this ready to go. Let that warm up a little bit. Now this has been sitting on my table back here uh, probably about seven months now, I believe. So it's weathered well. And I can't think of a better way to make the last piece of the cabin than using the piece that we cut out originally with the chainsaw mill. And that's what started this adventure for us. Make sure everything's clear. So we have put just under 17 hours on the saw to mill out everything we needed for a 12 by 12 cabin. Um, I think I've used about three and a half tanks of fuel. This little saw has done a really nice job of helping us get through this project. I have been cycling through four blades. Uh, I'm averaging about two hours per blade and each one of those blades are cutting through uh, oak material or hickory. It's all been hardwood. So out of our milling process, the hickory uh, that we brought in for our uh, ridge pole as well as our last tie logs was the toughest material to get through simply because of the sap and the fiber of the wood itself. It would actually clog the saw blade up. So I didn't have to sharpen uh, a couple of them. I just simply had to take them up and remove the uh, tree sap as well as the fibers off of the teeth so the blade could continue to cut. This saw, if you get your rails level and everything square, including leveling across your blade, this has done a really fantastic job of cutting this stuff out for us. And you can snap a line on your material and it will follow the chalk line. So if you have set your saw up and everything is square and level, you're going to enjoy the results. And <clears throat> being able to make this stuff any size you choose to for whatever project you're building is just a tremendous advantage. And I will say if I had to go and purchase this material, I don't think I would build it quite as heavy duty as we have made this one. So, you know, obviously budget always dictates to any project that we are doing. But since we were milling this from our trees, I didn't mind to go ahead and go a little bit over the top with the material that we have chosen to build with. So, let's get this guy flipped over and see if we can get our last board cut off of here. 
And then we get to the fun part as to seeing how this material looks. That's a great feeling guys knowing that we finally have this thing what needs to be complete. All right, let's come over here and look at some of these rafters. I'm proud of those. Those turned out really nice. This guy here on the end, this is a white oak. Uh, again, we are three inches by seven inches for our sizing on this material. And it does look nice. And I tried to leave a little bit of live edge on a few of these. Give the inside of the building a little bit of contrast and give you the feeling that it is a log cabin. I've been admiring this material so much I've almost drained the pond going down to get water to show you guys how good this stuff looks. <laughs> but it is worth it. The black gum is some of the nicest looking wood that we have milled through. These guys laid back. We had four of these, so I'm going to put them in the four corners of the roof system. And then that way, everything will spread out through to the oak rafters. Look at this material. And I'm sure as time is spent in the cabin, there will be a lot of conversation about how this material looks as well as the process of milling it all out. This beautiful character in here. And finally, we do have the red oak. Give you This is a white oak that we have here. Too much fun, guys. This is just too much fun. So 14 of these guys set up on a 612. And then by the time we come down with all of our flat material, See if I can slide one of these across there to show you. These will be spaced on three foot centers inside the building. So we're also going to get a great view of all of the flat material that's up on top. 
Just a really fun project, guys. Just got down there. And now that we have our last board cut for the build, we can finally start separating this stuff and getting it ready for transport to take it to its final destination. And I am really looking forward to the build on this. This is going to be a lot of fun. And with material like that, you can't go wrong. And our 16 foot hickory beam here is going to tie our roof system together and I'm looking forward to seeing this thing complete. Okay guys, uh, the HM126 has done a fantastic job for me. Each time I have used this, I've come to understand a little bit more about the saw and its capabilities, which is pretty much just simply limited to my experience. And again, at just under 17 hours on the saw, um, I'm gonna say less than six gallons of fuel and four blades that we cycled through probably twice as far as sharpening from new to sharpening I should say. So if you guys are thinking about one of these uh, it really does a good job. So on to the build. Uh, the next video you're probably going to get to see us load this up and take it to its destination which is going to be a fun trail ride on itself. Thanks for watching guys. I'll talk to you on the next one. Thanks for letting me share this with you.